Good evening, you're watching Estuary News. Coming up, we visit the hydrotherapy pool at Humberston to find out how the money that's raised is spent. And we find out whether you know what you'd be entitled to in benefits. And my guest tonight is Sharon Jordan Passmore from Foresight, who are in need of volunteers. <laughs> Welcome to Estuary News, I'm Emma Lingard. Now it's over to Erica Barker for the news headlines. A 24-year-old man died in the early hours of yesterday after being attacked yards from his home in East Hull. Rich Pepper is thought to have been stabbed on Egton Street off New Cleveland Street. One in five homeowners aged 60 and over in North East Lincolnshire worry they can't afford the costs of home maintenance. That's according to a study carried out by Age UK in the region, which also revealed many are concerned they don't have the physical strength to carry out repairs. Grimsby, Cleethorpes and District Citizens Advice Bureau has this advice. Drop in and see us. Um, we can then put them on the, the path in terms of looking at what help is out there. And sometimes there are opportunities and sometimes there are facilities that people can obtain. And particularly if someone has got health problems, the disabled facilities grants. You know, if, if the home has got problems with insulation or being kept warm in the winter, there's some excellent schemes that the local authority administer and, and help people to access. And we can work with the local authority partners to, to, to access those, those funds. To mark the start of Armed Forces Week, people gathered at Grimsby's Town Hall and the Remembrance Gates in Cleethorpes yesterday for their annual flag raising ceremony. Paying tribute to our servicemen and women, their families, veterans and cadets, celebrations will culminate on Saturday. Having served for 37 years in the army, it's, uh, it's nice to know that the, the people are behind us. Uh, the guys and girls at the moment have been doing a terrific job and uh, we don't get many pats on the back, we, we don't expect pats on the back, but it is nice when we receive them. It's not about celebration of Armed Forces Day, this is about thank you and our expression of gratitude to those men and women, reserve forces and indeed veterans who have served our community and our nation so well, past and present. And fundraisers are fighting to save a rural church in northern Lincolnshire. The Friends of St Nicholas need to raise £25,000 to be able to secure further funding to save the church in Ulsby. It's a Grade 1 listed building and we hadn't a vicar and we still haven't got one. And we needed the church to survive because village, villages need churches. And also, we need it as a venue, as a second venue in the village. So we decided that we wanted to keep it open. And that's the latest. Recently, a donation of over £10,000 was made to the Humberston Hydrotherapy Pool, which has recently surpassed a fundraising total of £1 million. Dave Nunn went along to the pool to find out how the money that has been raised is spent and how that benefits the pool's users. The highest total raised by the Waltham Wimble Golf Club Charity Golf Day has been donated to the Humberston Hydrotherapy Pool. The £10,500 is much appreciated by the pool and adds to their lifetime fundraising total that stands at over a million pounds. Absolutely marvellous and we're very grateful to Waltham Wimble Golf Club uh, particularly the captain this year and the captain last year and we understand the captain next year's forecast he's going to fundraise for us as well so it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, we've been fundraising for nearly 20 years now and we've just passed the million pound milestone of fundraising. It costs three quarters of a million to build the pool but then we've gone on for the last nine years fundraising to the, do the running and operation. The running and operation cost of this specialist pool don't come cheap. We need about 30,000 a year to run this facility and that's just the gas, heating, electricity, etc, water and that's what it costs us a year. <clears throat> Nobody gives us that money, it's places like Waltham Windmill fundraising for us. They've raised a third of our year's cost there with the 10,500 and it's absolutely brilliant. The £10,500 raised by the golf club will go straight back into the pool 
and help buy some of the specialist equipment that is required by the pool. Well, as I said, it's on the running cost, but also uh, for the costs of the uh, utilities. But it all goes towards, uh, also goes towards the harnesses that each child needs to be lowered and taken out of the pool. And of course, this is on these um, hoists that you've seen in the school. But of course, they're all very expensive. Brian and his wife have been fundraising for the pool for over 20 years. And he says times have been tough. But ultimately, the needs of the kids are what has motivated his dedication to the cause. Well, when we were turned down a couple of times by two large organisations who refused to fund us, and of course, um, prices for the building kept going up, people asked, why didn't we give up? And the truth is, the kids are still here. They, if you're ever getting a down day, come here and see our kids. It really lifts you up to know that there, for the grace of God, go you and I. You're watching Estuary News, coming up later. We find out whether you know what you're entitled to with changes to the benefit system. And Derek and Barker will be back with the sports news. An organisation which delivers learning and training for people with disabilities is in need of some assistance. Foresight, based in Grimsby and Scunthorpe, every year makes the sunshine for many disabled children. And joining me to explain how you can help is Sharon Jordan Passmore, the volunteer coordinator. Welcome to the studio, Sharon. First of all, before we, we talk about what you're in need of, just explain to us what is Foresight? Um, Foresight puts on activities and educational activities for people with disabilities across the board okay. um, and across all ages as well. During term time we work with adults with disabilities right. and then during all the holidays we work with children as well with disabilities um, and we take the children out on trips and places to places of interest, things like that. Okay. The foresight itself has been going for about twelve years, has I it? I think around about that. Yeah. And it started out initially, didn't it, for people who were partially sighted or yes. blind, wasn't it? So yes. we sort of like branched out now then yep. into all kinds of disabilities. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We we work with people with learning disabilities, physical disabilities, sensory impairments. So it might be visual impairments, right. hearing impairments. Okay. We've got some people that can't speak very well. So it, it's across the whole board really right. now. Okay. And you're a charity. We are as well. So do you rely on donations and, and people fundraising? Um, yeah. I mean, it's a lot of. Um, fundraising really you know we we're very lucky we um sort of got money from the lottery right um and uh, charity uh, um things like that yeah but it is difficult for charities isn't it I mean, we have so many people come in that they're tirelessly raising money yeah. when they can't get lottery grants i suppose you rely on that goodwill of people don't you as well oh definitely yes yeah, yeah it's, it's Hard work, I imagine. It is. <laughs> now, Sharon, how long have you actually been working for Foresight? Only about six or seven months since last November. Yeah, so. and you're the volunteer coordinator. So what does your role entail then? Um, I'm in charge of all the volunteers. So that includes um, recruiting volunteers, advertising for them, um, supporting and supervising okay. them once they're in yeah. um, basically everything that in entails working with the volunteers really and how many volunteers have you got on your database would you say i'd say about 40 or 50 at the moment because wow, that's a large number of people it is to, to take on and you've got two branches haven't you You've got grimsby and you've also got a base in scunthorpe yes. as well haven't you yes so the 40 people you've got have come to you with a range of different skills? Definitely, yeah. Yeah, I mean, some are, are really skilled. Some have got experience of having family members with disabilities. Some have got no experience whatsoever. Um, it doesn't matter. I would take on anybody that's got the, the passion and the willing to, to get in there and volunteer, really. 
And I suppose that's it as well. You know, when you're, you're volunteering, you are relying on that goodwill, aren't you? I mean, do, do you find at times you struggle to recruit for volunteers at all? I have done um, recently, yes. Um, but I think with the summer holidays coming, I'm getting quite a few students coming in now. Right, yeah. Um, but yeah, it has been a bit of a struggle. Yeah. The main struggle, I think, is trying to find a minibus driver. Right, so you need somebody that's got mini bus we driving do. skills. We <laughs> do, desperately, <Okay>. yes. <laughs> Anybody out there? And I mean, as well, for, for Foresight, do you have an awards ceremony, don't you, every year? We do, What's every year. What's that about? Um, we have awards um, that are given to, um, not only to the service users right. um, that get various awards for the different um, activities that they've done throughout the year, but we also give awards out to our volunteers right. for you know sort of good work and long service and all those sorts of things. But I mean that's a, a good thing because I think that shows in a way how much there is probably the caring ethos, isn't there, within Foresight to, to do such. Absolutely. An event, isn't yeah. I mean, what you've obviously been working there for a short time, but what do you get out of doing your job then? Job satisfaction, I think, is the biggest thing. Yeah, I mean, working with the service users, they are lovely, lovely people, yeah. um, and the volunteers. I mean, the amount of volunteers that come in and say it's not like working; it's so much fun coming here and working with the the service users that we have. Yeah, um, they really, really enjoy it. And it makes my day really enjoyable. Well, I was going to say that it give, gives you great pleasure. But the fact that they, they don't see it as work, I yeah. think that is the, that's the biggest thing, isn't it? Definitely. That they're enjoying themselves yeah. so much. Yeah. Well, we are going to talk more about, obviously, the volunteering side and, and talk a little bit more about what you're going to do in the summer as well. So stay where you okay. are. Right. It's time for another school in Big Questions for Little Kids. We are Wonderstone Cloverfield Academy. What makes a good political leader? Well, to be a good political leader, you need to speak up and be confident in yourself. Otherwise, people will doubt you and you, you won't be very good at leading. Well, the need to be like quick thinker and mentally strong, so like they can deal, they can cope with um, disagreements and pressure so they don't just break down and think that they can't do it anymore. I think you've got to be succinct, like not chattering on, otherwise people will stop listening to you. You've got to be straight to the point and only tell them what they really need to know. Somebody that's confident because if you're not confident, then like they might like, the people won't really like believe in you. Mm, they can't have stage fright or shyness because if you shy, no one will listen to your ideas. It's essential to have lots of self confidence and be able to speak in public and um, don't like talk and talk. Well, they need to have fair policies that benefit all kinds of people. Well, you've got to be authoritative without being too bossy and you've got to have a good record because no one really wants a leader to be someone who's been in prison in their life or done something bad. I think a political leader will have to be able to cope with disagreement because not everyone's going to agree with your ideas. Well, you need to be honest if you're a political leader and you, know to, you need to show some integrity. Um, you need to be able to think on the spot. And if your school wants to take part in the Big Questions feature, then call the news team on Grimsby 01472 315553. Now it's time to take to the streets to find out what you think about whether you know what money you would be entitled to in the benefit system. Everyone thinks if you just if you're not working, you 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 can claim job seeker allowance. But there ain't, there's other benefits out there you can actually claim. But they don't tell you that now. No, no. A lot of the time they're not. Um, a lot of the money people can claim is word of mouth. People from word of mouth. They don't get told in the workplace. Um, so yeah, there's there's a lot of money that's still outstanding to people that they don't claim. Um, yes, because there's that many advisors knocking about, sitting the advice. Age UK, etc. There's that many people around to give you the advice you want. 
quite a lot of them don't deserve it, by the way. Should get up and get a job. It's like PPI and stuff like that. You know, when PPI came out about two or three years ago, people weren't aware of it to claim, and they had to claim before there was such and such an age and that, but people weren't aware of it. Quite possibly. I just think it's a very complicated system to go through. I don't think um, they make it very easy for people to understand what they can and can't have. Yeah, I think it is. I'll yeah. you answer that, Yeah, I do, especially for um, uh, people with kids that do want to go to work. My guest tonight in the studio is Sharon Jordan Passmore, and we've been talking about the work Foresight does, where she is a volunteer coordinator. And Sharon, we were talking obviously a little bit about the history of Foresight um, and about it as a charity. Now, you're in need of volunteers this summer because you'd already mentioned you've got a range of activities and trips on, haven't you? What will you expect the volunteers to do? Um, what they need to do, I mean, the, the title of the volunteer that we have come in is support worker, okay. and basically that is what they do. They'll be supporting um, the staff that we have there just to look after the children, um, going out on the trips, they might be given one or two children okay. just to sort of work with. Um, and it's just to make sure they get on and off the minibus is okay, yeah. the buckled in okay. okay. Um, and just sort of do all those little jobs okay. of, you know, making sure the children are safe yeah. and looked after. Which is paramount. So what types of skills do you look for in your volunteers? I mean, do they need to come knowing first aid or having had experience of working with people with disabilities at all? Not at all. You know, if they've got experience of people with disabilities, then that's wonderful. But no, we don't need any experience at all. Okay. Um, we have trained first aiders um, in foresight, um, so we don't need any first aiders. Okay. Um, and I mean, everybody gets safeguarding training when they come in, okay. and um, there are sort of paid workers there that have to, all the to skills. So exactly to assist they're just to them. assist them. So we don't need any. So rarely, I suppose, when you, when what you look for is a, a passion, would you say, and the enthusiasm? Yeah, yeah to yes, turn definitely. Up. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, okay. and commitment. Commitment's the big thing, you know. Sort of. I need people, if they say they're going to be in Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, that they're going to turn up. Exactly. So when it comes down to it, I mean, what types of hours can they give as much or as little as, as what they can commit to then? Absolutely, yeah. Um, during term time when we work with the adults, um, we work in sessions. So we have okay. two hourly sessions in the morning and the afternoon. You can work as little as one session a week up to the whole week of both sessions yeah. um, with the children obviously if they're out for trips and it's the whole day yes um, but you can do one one day a week five days a week it's entirely up to you sounds like it can be a very rewarding job for the right people then I mean you've said yes. about how your volunteers say what a fun place yeah. it is and they don't see it as work <laughs> <laughs> which is good now, is there an age range as well that you're looking for for your volunteers not really, no. I mean, I've got volunteers um, ranging from 16 up to 70-odd. OK. Um, Tony is, uh, yeah, he's in his 70s and still volunteering. Yeah. So, no, any age, really. OK. Um, and the trips and activities, then, that you've got planned for this summer, I mean, can you give us an example of where some of the trips you might be going on? Uh, yeah, they'll be going down to the beach, they're going to Skegness, Maplethorpe, Cleethorpes, um, various museums, they're going to Lincoln, um, I can't remember, oh, um, Grimsby Leisure Centre, they're going ice skating, swimming. Wow. So there's lots of different <laughs> then there's things. there's lots of <laughs> There are, and we've got facilities at um, Foresight as well. Okay. We have a large auditorium that we can turn into a oh cinema, right. and the children come in and watch films in there. Yeah. So all sorts of activities. Lots of exciting activities, yes. isn't there? So you also mentioned before about the need for a minibus driver. Yes. Do they need to have their own minibus? No. But they just need to drive. <laughs> just drive it, yes. <laughs> we've got we've got the minibuses. Uh, we just need drivers really. Okay. And yeah. again, you're wanting people who have experience in driving the minibus. Yeah, and they need to they need to have a, a D one or a P 
ITCV, I think okay. it is. Okay, okay. But if there's anybody out there that is a minibus driver, then again, yes. they, they should contact you for that one. Yes, we'd really appreciate that. Okay, and I do have a number. So if anybody is interested in volunteering for Foresight, in whatever capacity, whether it's as minibus driver or you know helping with these activities, then the number to call is Grimsby, which is 01472 269666. Or they can email you, can't they, that's Sharon? Sharon. Yep. And that's Sharon, which is S H A R O N at foresight nellinks.co.uk. And I will give those details out at the end. Um, but fingers crossed for you, Sharon, that you get some volunteers that come yep. forward because it does sound like it's going to be a very interesting time. So thank yep. you very much for coming in. OK, thank you. Right, now it's over to Erica Barker with the latest sport. The Tigers' Capital One Cup first round away tie against Accrington Stanley will take place on Tuesday the 11th of August. The Tigers will receive an initial allocation of 500 tickets. And 12 years since Gregor Robertson made his professional debut, the 31-year-old will return to pre-season training with Grimsby Town a week on Wednesday, having signed a one-year permanent contract following a short loan spell with the Mariners. In cricket, the Yorkshire ECB Premier League was achieved by Scunthorpe side Appleby Frodingham. After hitting 184, they bowled to out the Yorkshire Academy for 170 and move up to fifth place in the league table. Cleethorpe's meanwhile dropped down to seventh after losing to Sheffield Collegiates who bowled them out for just 81 and went on to win by eight wickets. Hull suffered yet another defeat. They batted first and scored 208 with Chris Gray making 65 but Barnsley replied with 213 for four. And a Lincolnshire pony rider has competed in the annual Northern Mini Regionals Triathlon in Scotland. Daisy Williams from the Brocklesby Hunts Pony Club represented the whole of Eastern England. The nine-year-old took home first place overall and took the prize for best shoot, best swim, fourth place run and was placed into a mixed area team which also came third. And that's all from the sport. That's it for tonight. My thanks to Sharon from Foresight. And of course, if any of you out there want to volunteer, um, then you need to call Grimsby 01472 or email Sharon at foresight-nellinks.co.uk. Well, if you have a new story for us, then visit our Facebook or Twitter pages or email news at estuary.tv or pick up the phone and call Grimsby. Until tomorrow, goodbye. Estuary TV's weather, sponsored by Hornsby's, celebrating 100 years in buses. Hello and welcome to Estuary TV's weather. Some bright spells on Wednesday, with rain arriving by lunchtime, becoming heavier throughout the day and a maximum temperature of 20 degrees. Drier on Thursday with bright or sunny spells. Estuary TV's weather, sponsored by Hornsby's, celebrating 100 years in buses.